Anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Uh, all right. I'm doing all right. Travel sucks. Don't don't anybody tell you otherwise. Traveling sucks. But uh, yeah, I'm here. How more, are you, Jared? More trains, less airplanes. But uh, <laughs> that's my wish. More fast trains. Yes, 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 yes. Faster, more, bigger, faster trains. I hate airplanes. We need more, bigger, faster trains. Kyle, we're we're late. If you guys normally release this episode on a Monday, we're on a Wednesday. Kyle was uh, stuck uh, out of town, we'll say. Oh, due to uh, say her, her, due, the hurricane caught me back. So. <laughs> so some some plane travel issues. But you know what, Kyle? It's yeah. a new it's an old. No, it's a it's a new tradition. It's a new tradition. It's a good tradition. It's a uh, it's a an existing tradition. It's it's one that's been around we're, for. A we're we're going to keep call, Kyle. We're going to call it new until I'm tired of doing it. Until All I right. eventually decide I'm going sober. It's going to be. Well, a, what a, we're a, not. Well, what, well, what we're not tired of is talking about fall camp here. Fall camp is here, Jared. It's, and it's like a six. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Fall camp. Fall camp. Um, Buckeyes are on the field practicing a lot of lot of noise going on a lot of position battles a lot of interviews both coaching and and players you can you can smell in the air that football is right around the corner hey man I, you know what? it's back they're they're in camp they got the pads on yes the pads are on the the rest of the freshmen have reported we're back. Football's back. Ohio State football is back. Let's let's not waste too much time because there there is a lot. There is a lot here. So we'll we'll start with the elephant in the room, and that's the quarterback battle here. So <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to talk about the uh, French pole vaulter. Ah, uh, ah, uh, no. Maybe right. on, maybe more on that later. But right now, the quarterback battle. Howard Brown, Kineholtz, Sand, and Noland are the five quarterbacks yeah. for the 2024 Buckeye football squad here. Uh, Mags is there too. Mags is there too. Yes, yes. Top walk on, Mags. Um, yeah, uh, uh, so it, in a tier system, we can talk about Howard and Brown being sort of in the first tier uh, with the uh, Keenholes and Sayin in the second tier. Uh, officially speaking, Brown and Howard are still fighting for the first spot. I, 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 I don't think so. I, I think it's I, like I think it's Howard. I think we can pretty definitively say. Actually, I've made. Uh, we shared this depth chart last time. We recorded. I'll throw it back up there. Um, as I have made a couple changes since last week. Uh, based off of what we're seeing in camp, but yeah, it's de- I would say it's definitely Howard at one and Devin Brown at two. Uh, I hear that there's a pretty decent quarterback battle going on for the third spot um, between Keenholz and and Sayan. Um, Sayan looks promising, but Sayan looks young. I know, I know, I know, I know. He's a shiny freshman, shiny freshman. I get it. Everyone's excited, shiny freshman. He. He looks really good for a freshman. Everyone is raving about how good he looks for a freshman. We, if this were a rebuilding year, maybe we could be having, but this is not, this is a, this is a make or break year. This is a championship or bust year. The freshman quarterback's not touching the not touching the field during competition. During a blowout, sure, maybe. I mean, I I think you'd probably, but during during an act during actual competition, not happening. I know there's a lot of buzz, and I know, but it's not happening, guys. You just let that go. Um, so, but it does look like it's he's at least battling for the third spot. Uh, and officially speaking, Howard and Brown battling for the first spot. I think it's Howard. I think so too. I mean, you you got a very 
experienced veteran player coming in, transferring into Ohio State, uh, and, and everything around camp just saying he's he's being very vocal, he's acting like a leader, and that's that's what a senior will do will do for you too. Um, making making the right making the right decision, saying the right things. I mean, he's checking all the boxes up front here. Yeah. Uh, he, he gives a good interview. Like he is a, he's the guy. Like he's done like it he, a few he times. gives, what's that? Like he's done it a few times. Yeah. 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 He, he's an adult in the room. Um, like, Ohio, and this is the second time I've made this comparison in two weeks, but it's kind of like having JT Barrett back for a year. As far as he he's not going to be the type of quarterback that Ohio State has had the past few years, as far as being like like a true pro style quarterback. Yeah. Uh, we're not we're, he's not going to put up Dwayne Haskins numbers. And he that, doesn't have to. And, and, I, and I think that's I one of the things that I think that's one of the things Howard mentioned was that one thing he likes coming to Ohio State, he doesn't feel like he has to be the guy like he has to be um he doesn't have to be superman he doesn't have to everything runs through him in order for the team to do well exactly like he, ha- he has all he has all the great what we- he has a lot of great weapons around him exact quote from howard i have the guys around me i just need to facilitate and get them the ball i don't have to do anything superhuman mm-hmm. yeah but what seems superhuman for his size is per per Tom or I'm sorry, Tom or um boosted this year, but Chip Kelly stating that Will Howard ran 22 miles an hour. It's fast. That's fast. That's it doesn't seem like that's correct. I mean, I, I I believe. Oh, listen, Ohio um, State. Ohio I, I, I State is kind of rule number one. Rule number one, Jerry. I, I would say we've seen some speed stats out of Ohio State be a little exaggerated in the past. Okay, all right. That's what I'll say about that. Um, <laughs> and also, like, how fast? How long does it take him to get up to twenty-two? Because I think that also <laughs> plays a, a factor in yes. it. That yes, that that matters as well. Um, I mean, as long as he, as long as he's, I'll say, as long as he's like quick, like JT Barrett, JT Barrett wasn't the fastest guy unless you're in Minneapolis in zero degree weather and you're out running corners and safeties, <laughs> uh, in, in that game. But if he, if he's quick, if he's quick enough to be like JT Barrett, where he can make a guy miss and mm, gain yardage when he really would have gotten a sack. I mean, that's honestly, that's all I really want to see out of Howard is being able to use his legs to make a play. Yeah. And and to go back to the JT Barrett comparison I was making before, I think we ADHD would off into something else for a moment, What you're also getting is a leader you're getting a guy who wants to move the chains. You're getting an adult in the room. Um, the JT Barrett run in Minnesota had to have been the result of some kind of angels in the outfield situation. Nah, man, that's just JT Barrett. That's just JT Barrett for better or worse. That's just JT Barrett. Um, yeah, it's, for better or worse, I, I think that's what we're looking at here. And JT Barrett won a lot of great games for Ohio State. And again, it's not going to be the pro style quarterback that we are used to. Uh, you know, but it, I, you don't look, 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 Georgia didn't have anyone spectacular at quarterback when they won the national championship game. Bama has had many unspectacular quarterbacks win national championship games. Um, yeah, Michigan's quarterback, nothing special, won a championship. Um, it's 
you, I, I mean, I don't know. I'd, I'd actually want to maybe take a, which we're not going to do live on the podcast here. I wouldn't mind like taking a look at like the past 20 national championship winning quarterbacks and just being like, was, was he like the guy? You know what I mean? And I would say rough guess it's 50, 50. Like rough guess, I would say 50, 50. Yeah. You know, was the quarterback the guy on that team, on that offense? Like I said, rough guess, probably 50-50. The defense will be good enough. The run game will be good enough. And what you need out of the quarterback is someone to facilitate and someone to move the chains when the chains need moving. And I think Howard is that guy. Not can be that guy. I think he is that guy. Which I think it maybe is the knock on Brown. Which is what we've been hearing for, I mean, like, since last year when we were talking about McCord versus Brown, yeah. is that Brown is at times spectacular, but at times inconsistent. And I think that's exactly what you don't need for this team. I think you need someone who is very consistent, very reliable, someone who's not going to turn the ball over, which I hear great things about. Howard and ball security. Um, you just need someone who can get the ball to the weapons and let the defense do their job on the other side of the field, as far as not putting them in bad positions with, with turnovers and, and the like. Yeah. Uh, Chip Kelly recently had a press conference. I'll say that he uh, dodged questions as far as anything about who's the starter and when the choice will be made about who's the starter. Um, Day did state earlier uh, that he wants to know who the quarterback will be within the first two weeks of camp. But he, he said that's a thing he wants to know um, that he would like to know. He, he not putting himself on a hard deadline, but again, everything, uh, you know, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be Nostradamus here or anything. I don't think this is some sort of wild take, but I, everything we're seeing, everything we're hearing does in fact suggest it's going to be Will Howard. Yeah, I, I think so too. I think so. Uh, on Will Howard. And by the way, Chip Kelly spent more time talking about Will Howard than Devin Brown in the press conference. Probably notable. I'm just saying, if you're reading tea leaves, go watch, go watch the press conference. Who does he talk more about? Mm. Um, uh, does say that uh, Will Howard's zip has increased. Um, but he also says that that's something that can happen as a quarterback gets more comfortable within the offense. So it's a good thing, right? He's, he's getting more comfortable. Mm -hmm. He's letting the ball rip a little bit more. Um, a lot of these reps going against a really good defense for what that's worth. Yeah. Uh, more on Howard from Chip Kelly says um, Howard's ability to run is a great weapon. When he takes off, it, it could be a 60 yard gain instead of a six yard gain. He keeps plays alive. He extends plays. Then he says, and I have to say, I love Chip Kelly for saying this. But we also are not going to run them 25 times per game. It's just another facet of what we can do. Mm -hmm. Speaking of JT Barrett, <laughs> speaking of JT Barrett, we're not going to run him 25 times a game. My least favorite aspect of the Urban Meyer era, the save us Braxton slash JT Barrett offense. Whenever yeah. things got shaky, they would just run the quarterback 25 times. Um, So th th thank you, Chip Kelly, for... uh alleviating my fear there had we not run JT Barrett 25 times a game maybe he would have had a shoulder left by the time he was a senior just saying uh also hearing really good things just on a non-quarterback note hearing really good things about the two young running backs and how they're coming along in camp uh Williams Dixon and Peoples and of course, lots of good things about Henderson and Judkins. 
I think still my, I, I think after I, I removed a couple ampersands from the defensive depth chart, now the only ampersand I have in the, in the depth chart that I am currently predicting is uh, Henderson and Judkins. Cause they're just, they're one A and one B like they're, they're both going to get a lot of reps. I, I don't think starting matters a ton here. Uh, sounds like most of the freshman running backs are an aspect of the team. The aspect of the team, the beat has been the most surprised about. Yeah, I, I've heard that they've both taken a pretty decent step forward since spring. Which, hey, the, you know, they're true freshmen. That That type of leap is why they come in in the spring instead of in the fall. So that they're making that leap now and not in the middle of the season. You yeah. um, know, I probably could and maybe even should put an ampersand on the tight ends. Uh, I just feel situational to me between G Scott and Will kick Merrick. Uh, that's that's it. If you I just one of them's an offensive line extension, the other one is a additional wide receiver on the field which is not to say G Scott Jr. can't block because I think especially by the end of last season, he got very good at blocking. So mm -hmm. that's not, you know, I think he's come a long way in that realm, but kick Merrick's basically an offensive tackle. That's, that just is what that is. Yeah. Uh, we can talk a little bit about the offensive linemen and the wide receivers as well. But before we do that, Kyle, Let's take a quick ad break. Um, I don't feel any uh, patreon.thesloopcast.com. Donate to the podcast, get premium access in the discord server, get access to ad free episodes uh, and get early access to episodes. And the, the discord server and just join the, even if you don't get the premium section of the discord server, the free section of discord server is still fantastic. We're going to watch games with us on Saturday, which is a thing that's coming up here in just a few weeks. Yeah. Um, if you, if you can always, you can join us when we watch the game, even if you're not a paid member, but if you're a paid member, uh, you get, um, speaking privileges, in in that room so you can talk to us while we're watching games um come for the football stay for the shenanigans yeah pretty much pretty much esquire um esquire uh live promoting his his choice to be a contributing patreon member so that's patreon.thesloopcast.com and discord.thesloopcast.com here are those ads now Hey, back from the ads. I have to say, sometimes when I say, hey, enjoy a ad free listening while I'm in the middle of doing a self advertisement, I always feel a little like I'm lying. I just wanted to own that. That's all. All right. Um, <laughs> Kyle, offensive line or wide receiver? Where are you going to go next? Let's do the offensive line. Let's let's hear more about the slobs. We, we've mentioned a number of times here that. The offensive line has to do better than they did last year. And yeah. to me, to me, I know everybody, everybody wants to look at the quarterback and rightfully so. How how is Howard going to do? How is Brown going to do? Sure. But honestly, it's it's who's going to protect one or the other here. Like we, we And if we we're gonna really rely on the run game. Yeah. I was just interjecting. I wasn't interrupting, Kyle. If you want to keep talking, no. keep talking. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we, we saw we saw a lot last year where like didn't have time at all to do anything. I don't care. If, I don't care who you put back there at quarterback last year. The offensive line did not get the job done. And yeah, it, I'm really curious to see how the offensive line does this or see how they develop this year because they they've got to step it up compared to last year. I totally agree. Um, I I hear a lot of good things about Josh Fryer taking leaps from last year as far as his conditioning and his, you know, trying to improve his footwork and his athleticism. Um, we apparently have a pretty active offensive line battle at right guard. 
Carson Hinsman and Tegra Chabola apparently are in the middle of a pretty active competition for the right guard spot. This was a spot that I think Kyle and I uh, just to, you know, before camp started just a week ago or so thought that Hinsman probably had this locked up, but it appears that as, as camp goes on, uh, Tegra's really pushing for it. And it, and although Hinsman has been taking snaps at center, it does look like the team's preparing him to have a more focused intent on the right guard position as they've bumped Luke Montgomery all the way into center to add another center to the roster, um, which also, you know, you have a first time center in camp doing snaps probably a very good indicator that Seth McLaughlin is in fact the starting center. Mm. Uh, I would say that's a, I would say that's a very strong indicator that if, if you've taken last year's center who was competing for the center spot and said, Hey, we want you to be a dedicated guard now, which is again, not really the case because Hinsman is still taking snaps at center, but why why else why else move Luke Montgomery to center? It seems like you're moving Montgomery to center so that Hinsman can focus at guard, which means that McLaughlin has locked up the center spot. That's my interpretation of it. Um Berm, I think, predicted Montgomery could play center all the way from his recruitment. I, I think that Montgomery was always a bit of a let's get him here and see where he fits kind of guy. I think there was a lot of hope that he was going to play tackle. Um, he, all I mean, he, there was talks. I mean, and this would have been like when he was a junior, I think by the time he got to his senior year in high school, I, I don't think I'm mixing him up with someone. Maybe I might be mistaken where like there was thoughts about him being a tight end. Now, get into his, like his senior phase of his recruitment. Everyone was pretty locked in on. No, he's an offensive lineman. So then it became, well, is he a tackle or a tight end? Then the conversation became, is he a tackle or a guard? And again, like it's just if you can play guard, you can play center as long as you can sort of have the composure to snap, which is a. A thing <laughs> having that composure to snap when you have 600 pounds of defensive tackle surrounding you is more of a thing than I think people realize. Um, but yeah, it does look like right now. I, I think I feel pretty comfortable saying McLaughlin's the starting center. Montgomery's the backup center. Hinsman at right guard with Chibola. Although that's very 1A, 1B right now. Um, Fryer has the right tackle spot locked down. Donovan Jackson, of course, has the left guard spot locked down. Josh Simmons has the left tackle spot bo- blo- uh, blah, 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 locked down. Um, interesting to note that we do have a bit of a battle going on with the backup tackles. Any thoughts on that, Kyle? Yeah, it's I, I I'm really curious about um Fitzpatrick. I know um coming in coming into Ohio State, uh, a lot a lot of talent here. Curious about where where he's coming at as well. But um there, there's still there's still there's still a lot of questions about uh who's gonna be that first offensive tackle. Um, off of the bench there. Um, Fitzpatrick could be that person. Um, Zen could also be um, be in the mix there as well, too. So I, th- I think those are probably two players to look out for. Yeah. Um, and I, I think uh, it was Gardeman over at Buckeye Huddle who was mm-hmm. talking yeah. about, you know, is it a who's the third tackle? Or is it a Zed Mikowski is 
number two at left and Fitzpatrick is number two at right. So, you know, and that's probably not a thing we'd get real clarity on unless there was an injury, but it, it just, it's, it's an interesting battle to watch as far as depth is concerned, as far as preparing for potential injuries in the future is concerned. Is there a third tackle? Is it, or is it going to be more of a you're the backup at left and you're the backup at right situation? And I, I think it's also worth watching if, say, Hart Hinsman does win the right guard spot, which is very possible. Is Tegra back out at tackle or, you know, does he just become does Tegra at that point just become the sixth offensive lineman for everywhere other than center. You know, does, does Tegra essentially become like your ultimate utility offensive lineman? Mm -hmm. Interesting things to watch. Hopefully things we never have to get answers on. Um, Hopefully not. Yeah. Esquire in the chat says really worried. It's a battle of who's least bad rather than who's better. Uh, sometimes it works out like that. Um, Ohio <laughs> State's depth, especially at the tackle position, is not good. Um, and tackle is a spot where it's really difficult to recruit over players. At wide receiver, you can recruit over players. At running back, you can recruit over players. And if you don't know what I mean by recruit over, I mean... If you have like a bad recruiting class, you can get some really good freshmen and then the freshmen just take over and become the starters instead of the more seniored people. Um, at tackle, that's very difficult to do. It's not a position where you see true freshmen start very often. And when they do, it often we saw in Alabama, best tackle in the country started as a true freshman, and it went very, very bad. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how he um, picks up this year, though. Now but that yes, he's transferred to Iowa and then back to Alabama. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes it sometimes it goes well. Caden sometimes Proctor. it doesn't. It, it's 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 the. It's the gamble. It's 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 incredible. It's, 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 it's incredibly difficult. And just the point being, we don't need to talk about Caden Proctor. The point just being that the tackle position is very difficult to recruit over. If you have a bad recruiting class or two, that's when you need to. I mean, nowadays, that's when you need to start hitting the transfer portal. And thank God Josh Simmons is on the team, because where would we be without him right now? And they really needed to get a guy out of the portal to add to the tackle position, but there just wasn't anyone there. No Ohio State starter level offensive tackle hit the portal. A couple did, but then they ended up going back to where they started. No, no one actually, unless you count Caden Proctor, who transferred to Iowa and then back to Alabama, who he still ends up back to where he started. And Ohio State tried with Caden Proctor. Um, but there's uh, there wasn't an offensive tackle who actually transferred who was of Ohio State quality this offseason. Again, unless you count Proctor which I don't because he just ended up back at Alabama. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think we're starting to get a better idea of what the offensive line might look like. Um, right guard is, I would say the one open spot here as far as the starting is concerned. Um, keep an eye on Tegra. Keep an eye on the, you know, who's the backup tackles, I would say, are the two things to to keep an eye out on. And, and Luke Montgomery as well, of course. Hey, Jared, can we can we talk about the shiny freshman? Can we talk about the shiny freshman? 
only if we're talking about the one shiny freshman who needs talked about and is currently in the thumbnail. Yes, that that is him, Jared. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the wide receivers, wide receivers, like same, just insert same story from last year and the year before, yada, yada, yada. Insert this year, another great, great uh, wide receiver uh, group here. And whoever's going to be the quarterback is, yeah, going to be like a kid in the candy store. Just throw up, throw it up and let them, let them make a catch. Essentially. Yeah. And, you know, we're we're looking at a four deep wide receiver right now, I would say. Um, and there's typically three spots and, you know, there's a lot of talk of will Ohio State run 12 this year. Will they run a two tight end offense more often this year? And I don't know. I feel like it's a thing we always talk about, but rarely see um, is as, as, as well as people talking about Ohio State running 21 this year, which I also did, but whatever. I think more often than not, you're going to see three wide receivers on the field. And I think that there are four wide receivers to fill those three spots in some sort of configuration, in some sort of rotation. Yeah. Those guys are, are we- Jeremiah Smith, the uh, previously mentioned shiny freshman who, you know, when we say shiny freshman, that's in case that's not obvious That's often sarcastic. That's often us sort of making fun of all of the hype that the freshmen get simply because the freshmen are new and shiny. If I don't know last time we've actually explained what we mean by that, Kyle, the freshmen show up and they get a lot of stories written about them simply because the beat writers need to write new stuff and the new players are new and they get a lot of stories and everyone gets really excited about the freshmen Based off of, if nothing else, how new they are. It's, you know, we can only talk about how great a Mecca Ibuka is so many times. So we stop talking about how great a Mecca Ibuka is and we start talking about how the big shiny freshman is big and shiny. So when we when we call someone a shiny freshman, oftentimes that is that is meant to be sarcastic. Um, in the case of Jeremiah Smith, it is not. He actually is a really big, really shiny freshman. Like uh, he he is everything that he is advertised to be. He continues to do superhuman things. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 not, it's not it's not just the media. It's not just the media hyping him up. It's not just the coaches um, giving him credit too. it's. It's the players like the, the players are. Mm-hmm. Or saying a lot of <clears throat> saying a lot of great things about about him too. Not not just how insanely talented he is, but his more so his work ethics too. And and I think that yeah, yeah. that says a lot. That says a lot about about a player is the work ethics that that someone puts in before even hit before even stepping onto the field uh, during during uh, game day. Right and and already and already saying how hardworking and how yeah. great his their, his work work ethic is. It's it's, it's sometimes great to hear. sometimes when a player is as physically gifted as Jeremiah Smith is, and sometimes when there is as much hype around a player as there is around Jeremiah Smith, one of the things you have to really worry about as a coach when you're bringing that player in is them, you know showing up thinking they're hot shit and think that they can just walk onto the field because they're just that, you know, hand delivered by God. Yeah. I think so. You know, I think think urban urban Meyer, I think it was urban Meyer who, I don't know if he coined this phrase or not, but he talked about D recruiting players. You spend the entire recruiting cycle, t- cycle telling them how great they are. And then they, you bring them into camp and then you have to bring them back down to earth so that they don't think they're just going to walk onto the field immediately. Yeah. The thing is with Jeremiah Smith is that appears to not be an issue. He seems to show up, be everything he's advertised to be, but that's not slowing down his work ethic, which is a perfect storm. It is. And why he is in fact, Starting as a freshman, because he's going to start as a freshman. He's going to start as a true freshman. And that means something 
because this wide receiver room is deep. It's very, very deep. And again, there are three guys on this team at the wide receiver position right now who are bona fide starters. N- no one would tell you that Emeka Buka, Carnell Tate, or Brandon Ennis couldn't start anywhere in the country. I don't there I don't think there's a I don't think there's a team in the country who would trade their three wide receivers for those three wide receivers. There's not a team in the country that would do that. And that's before we talk about Jeremiah Smith, who has worked his way into the starting lineup. Yeah, I don't I'm I'm trying to think of a of a team. Um, does, I don't know. Is the pick six, who, how do, who does the pick six preview, Kyle? I mean, I mean, maybe, 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 maybe you can say. Give the pick six you preview. Say, readily Oregon, available. Maybe you could say Oregon. Oregon they, they has do have a, good has, wide receivers. They do. They not, really not do. Um, Tez Tez is uh, coming back last year, and they have they have some uh, depth that's going to pop up this year too. I'm. Drawing a blank on their on their names right now, but you you can you can make an argument that Oregon could can compete right there. Sure. Uh, do do you have the uh, pick six preview? Who do they have as their um, top wide receiver teams? Ohio State has to be uh, number one, right? Just looking for an outside source. Yeah, Just, yeah. Give me. Just so we're not being total homers here. <laughs> yeah, give give me a second. Um, give uh, me just a moment. I'm scrolling down here. Yeah, I found it too. I'm also scrolling down. Okay. Uh, Off it. Oh, there we go. They have best wide. Re- go ahead. Best he the he or excuse me. Uh, they they have the best wide receiver slash tight end. So combining those two together, mm. they, they have That's, Ole that hurts. Miss. Yeah. Ole Miss has one, Texas has two. That's bullshit. Then Ohio State, then Oregon. Listen, I, I know the tight end's a bit of a drag on the ticket. I I understand that. Uh, but nah, that's bullshit. Straight up. How How, how good, how good... Could Ole Miss's offense in general be if Quincy Judkins is currently at Ohio State? Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. How good could that offense really be if Judkins was just like, nah, I'm out? How good could it really be? That's all I'm saying. He didn't come here for the yellow line. So I hear someone saying it. I hear someone saying, well, maybe you'll miss his offensive line as well. Yeah, ours isn't great is either. I'm just looking here. Um, three receivers went for over 700 yards last year. Trey Harris, Jordan Watkins, and Dayton Wade. And only Wade departed. Uh they did get a transfer of so, um, of Antoine Wells from South Carolina to had a go ahead. No, but see, but this is this is what happens, and I and I don't blame I don't blame the guys over at Pick Six Preview for this. Okay, Emeka Buka returns, Marvin Harrison doesn't. They see lost production. We know how good Carnell Tate is, but he doesn't have production numbers. We know how good Jeremiah Smith is, but he's a freshman. He literally has no productive numbers. We know how good Brandon Ennis is. But again, didn't have a lot of production because Xavier was here and because Marvin Harrison Jr. was here. So if you 
sometimes and and again, it's not his fault at all. I'm not I'm not ripping at the guy. I'm not ripping on the guys over at Pick Six Preview. Because sometimes a lot of times you look at that stuff in the in terms of production and returning production. And Ohio State doesn't have returning production at wide receiver, which is why they fall to third. Yep. But I'm telling you right now, if you ask an NFL scout whose wide receiver room they'd rather have, easier metric to defend. Yeah. And like if you're trying to analyze 130, how many teams are we up to now? 130 some teams. Sometimes you have to fall back on metrics a bit. So I think the question is, Kyle, with the wide receivers, we have a definitive top four. Abuka, Tate, Ennis, Smith. Yep. I would agree with that. And they'll all get snaps. I, 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 there's a lot of conversations. Who's going to be inside? Who's going to be outside? Who's going to be X? Who's going to be Y? Who's going to be Z? They're, they're all going to play. I, and I'm willing to bet that there'll be a decent amount of, maybe with the exception of Jeremiah Smith, maybe you want Jeremiah Smith as a freshman to like learn one position. But Tate and Ennis and Abuka, I'm, I'm sure there'll be plenty of movement around the different spots. I'm not, I'm not going to get caught up in the details of who's going to be at what spot. It's it's not, I don't think it's important right now. What I think is interesting is Ryan day, a couple weeks ago, feels like a couple weeks ago. It may have been last week for all I know, um, said um, that the wide receivers are uh, quote, kind of top heavy, uh, and then he specifically called out Jaden Ballard as a guy who needs to step up. Um, he After that, he tagged uh, Bryson Rogers and Kojo Antwi in that same uh, sentiment. So who is the fourth wide receiver? And I, I think there'll be a lot of people who will say it's Bryson Rogers. I think you see a lot of people say Ballard or Antwi. However, two names I keep seeing pop up as I read all of these different camp notebooks and this and that's two names I keep seeing pop up. David Adolph and Dorian Williams, who are a pair of walk-ons. David Adolph, you might remember, uh, had a great spring game. Dorian Williams, you might remember, uh, is a player who chose to walk on at Ohio State de- despite having, quote unquote, no offense to, I don't know what his scholarship offer list was, but inferior Division One FBS offers. Chose to walk on at Ohio State. Could we see? And by the way, Ohio State's currently like at 90 or excuse me, not 90, 80 or 79 scholarships. Just saying, don't be shocked if you see um, either Adolph or Williams be given a scholarship here soon. And especially with the scholarship number jumping up to 105 next season. Don't be surprised if you see these guys get scholarship soon but uh, david adolph dorian williams two walk-ons currently on the team whose names just keep popping up whenever i'm reading listening watching to ohio state coverage Mm -hmm. i just want to sort of plant my flag there that's it i'm just sort of planting a flag if you if you see if you see these guys start making impacts just know you heard it here first Unless you read and listened to all the things I read and listened to, in which case you heard it from them first. But you may have heard it from me first, in which case you heard it from me first. Um, Keep an eye on David Adolph and Dorian Williams. And also hearing uh, true freshman Mylon Graham starting to catch his catch his stride in the offense a bit. And with that, Kyle.
go to our second ad break. Um, I already did the plugs. Patreon.thesloopcast.com and Discord.thesloopcast.com. Here's that commercial now. You know, we did the first one kind of early and we did the second one kind of late. That was a that was a big chunk of ad free content in there. Unless, of course, you're watching this on YouTube, in which case we always sneak in an extra one in there because that's just how YouTube works. And we have to be good partners with our friends over at Buckeye Huddle. Anyway. Defense. Let me switch the tab. We're talking mostly about the offense today. The defense, as we talked about last week in our general preview, general audience preseason preview is a lot of returning names. So inherently less interesting to talk about. Of course, Denzel Burke and David Igbenosan are the starting cornerbacks. They were the starting cornerbacks last year. Of course, so is Ransom and Tyler Williams and Jack Sawyer and JT Tuimo Alau and Jordan Hancock. Of course, all-star transfer Caleb Downs is the starting safety alongside Ransom, of course. It's this is just inherently less interesting to talk about. We'll spend the first two thirds or more of the show talking about the offense, of course. We do have some notes here on the defense, though, Kyle. Where do you want to start? Well, let's let's talk about. You know, to me, I think the most interesting position is the linebackers. I think. I think. Yeah, that's everybody where we actually defense- lost players. Yeah. Defensive defensive line is stacked, well-known names. The corners, everybody knows the corners and as well as the safeties with with the shiny new transfer uh <laughs> player coming in. A- actually as well shiny in the safety. Not non-sarcastic <laughs> shiny. Yes. So the linebackers, yeah, there's I think the linebackers are interesting because it's kind of been the weak point for for a while in Ohio State's defense here. Um, but I think I think Jim Knowles has gotten gotten his hands around the linebackers and it, we've seen last year linebackers were really improved dramatically last year. And yeah, let's let's talk a little bit more about them and let's let's kind of start with with Sony Styles and CJ Hicks. And um, yeah, and um, who, who, and maybe Simon throwing Simon is in there as well too. Um, yeah, what, what, seems, what more? What more do you do you see? Well, it seems like Cody Simon is the mic. Full stop. I think in earlier versions of this depth chart, I had Simon and Hicks sort of ampersand into the mic position. Um. It seems as though Cody Simon is the mic full period, full stop. The battle. And of course, I don't know if battle is the right word, because how the hell do you take Sonny Styles off the field? So I, I don't know if it's a battle or if it's a. Grouping or if it's a, you know. Not sure. I'm, I, I'm not finding the right word. Um, a grouping issue, a, a, an alignment issue or what, what the situation is. I, there's a word I can't pull anyway. Um, between, so you have Sunny Styles, CJ Hicks, who are in a quote unquote battle for the will position. In my opinion, these are your two outside linebackers. And if you have two of them on the field, it's Sonny Styles. And if you have three of them on the field, Hicks is also out there. It, it just it just sucks that you can only put eleven on the field. <laughs> <laughs> That's sort of where we are with the four two right now. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and it does again, and it's not the first time we've talked about this. It does make you wonder how much three three we're going to see. Now, it, it, it on the other side, the team. but on the other side of that, Jim Knowles said in a interview uh, in, in a press conference recently that he feels like he has like six defensive tackles that he likes. So, like, it's, it's not like they're hurting for depth along the front. 
They have four starters at defensive end. Kenyatta Jackson and Caden Curry are starters. They might not start on this team, but they are starters. They are starting level talent. They are Ohio State starting level talent. Caden Curry and Kenyatta Jackson are. That being said, JT and, and Sawyer are the starters. The defensive line is insanely deep. And then to also sort of bounce that down to three spots on the field also feels a little bit crazy. You know, we said that last year, too, that last year's defensive line was deep. Yeah, and then none of them left. And none of them left, yes. <laughs> I mean, not none of them, but so, yeah, the young guys got better. I mean, we're hearing wonderful things about uh, Caden McDonald. Like we we have a total stock rising on Caden McDonald. Uh, Recently uh, in that same press conference, Knowles said, quote, he can be a real force. It's a compliment. I, 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 that's what you want to hear, right? Yes, yeah, stunks. Stunks are on the way up. We've only ever heard good things about Hero and his development. And also, um, along those same lines, because maybe you're watching, listening to this, and you're like, well, there's the 3-3, three, three, and then there's the 4-2. What about a more NFL-style 4-3? How do you take Jordan Hancock off the field? How do you take Jordan Hancock off the field? Feels like the answer to that is that you don't. How do you take Sonny Styles off the field? I feel like the answer to that is that you don't. Well, how do you take Ty Hamilton off the field? Well, it feels like the answer to that is that you don't. Well, we're running out of spots to put guys on the field. CJ Hicks is out here sounding like he's an, like a, you know, an odd front. The way they talk about CJ Hicks, the way they talk about him is like a pass rushing demon. So how do you take CJ Hicks off the field? Especially when he sounds so much, so much like an odd front outside linebacker. Because because the the way guys talk the way he's talked about, it sounds like a, it sounds a lot like he's an odd front outside linebacker, which is essentially an, an an edge rusher. And by the way, I don't know. It's and I'm it's, and I'm it's gonna a good re- problem to have, I guess. It's a very good problem to have. <laughs> and like I'll, I'll reiterate a point that Mark Givler over at Buckeye Huddle has been saying for years which is that he always felt like Sonny Styles was an edge rusher. <laughs> <laughs> and like from his recruitment, that's what, how he felt. And I don't know. It, it makes me a little bit happy. Gives me a little bit of joy to think about an odd front defensive line with Sonny Styles and CJ Hicks on the edge. It, it, it gives me a little bit of joy just to think about that. That's all I'm saying. There's too many good players on this team, especially on the defensive side, especially on the defensive side. Offense, you know, there's a there's a there's a there's a a patch or two that I wouldn't mind making on the offense. On the defense, I, I don't even know what formation they should run with the talent that they have. I said this last week in the general audience preview. I honestly feel like there is a, I feel like there are teams in the big 10. There are teams in the big, I don't even think that's a stretch to say. I felt like I was saying that like it's a stretch. I don't feel like it's a stretch to say there are teams in the big 10 who would train trade their starting defense for Ohio state second string defense. I, I, Jermaine Matthew, Caden Curry, Hira Canoe, Caden McDonald, Kenyatta Jackson Jr., Calvin Simpson Hunt, CJ Hicks, Gabe Powers, 
Lorenzo Styles, Malik Hartford, Jaden Bonsu. That's your that's your second squad defense. Good problem to have. That's your second squad defense. There's like one, maybe two guys in that defense who I'm like iffy about. And that's not even that's not even me saying iffy in a polite way. Like actually just kind of eh about. The, the, like Indiana. in the nicest Indiana way. would love to have that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Indiana. Northwestern would love to have that. Sparty uh, in a would love to have that. In a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. All of those teams. I mean, we, we, Kyle, we should probably name the Big Ten teams that wouldn't take that lineup. Um, anybody who's not in the who's not in the top seven or eight. Would USC take that lineup? I'm just going to let you know what question question for the comment section. <laughs> Would you rather have. Question for the discord question for the YouTube comment section. Would you rather have USC's starting defense or Ohio State's second string defense as I just named them a, a minute or two ago? I'm tossing that out there. I'll let other people figure it out. I'll let other people figure it out. But I think it's a question. I think it's a question worth asking, which is bad if you're USC. That's all I'm saying. Michigan wouldn't. Michigan has a good starting 11. Penn State wouldn't. Yep. I don't think uh, Oregon wouldn't. Um, there, There are, you know... Many teams, I don't think Wisconsin would. There are many teams in the Big Ten that wouldn't. Uh, Iowa would not. Iowa would not. Um, there are many teams in the Big Ten that wouldn't take that trade. But there are many that would. There are many that would. Many, many. All right, I just glazed the defense for 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 15 minutes. We didn't even really talk about anything. But that's okay. You can talk about punt returns. We can talk about punt returns, Kyle. What do you hear on punt returns? Uh, is this going to be the year, or am I going to be, or is am I going to have another year of disappointment? I don't know. Don't know. I mean, there's this is Kyle's the year. year. <laughs> Parker Fleming has been exercised. <laughs> it is time. Uh a lot, a lot of names, a lot of names thro thrown out there. Um, Ibuka, Ballard, Ennis, her downs as well. The, the latest thing that I saw, I think somebody in the Discord showed me a picture and like tagged me, hey, Kyle, look who's returning punts. And there's number four, uh, uh, Jeremiah Smith. And I'm like, don't get, don't get my hopes up, guys. <laughs> don't get my hopes up. And this would be a sick punt returner. He's also been seen. I think so. No, actually, one of the names been, not I've been on the list. It, I've been saying it for years, Jared. I've been saying it for years, and I'll continue saying it through the 2024 oh. season. Okay. You know what I'm going to say? You want two returners. There you go. Listen, I'm not against that. Because um, last time that happened, in the last, it was pretty successful. Yeah, I know. Just saying, just saying they were really successful when they had two in, returners. If I if I'm going to give you a little bit of hope in this front, Kyle, I'm going to give you a little bit of hope in this front. The defense should be good enough. The defense will be good enough to force more punts sure. more often. Mm -hmm. That being that, said, I don't true. think this offense is going to be quite as quick strike. So that could hurt. But shorter punt returns could equal more touchdowns. That's all I'm saying. Better defense should mean more better opportunities to return punts for touchdowns. That's all I'm saying. And I feel like that's uh, at least somewhat true. I feel like that's decent analysis. And that is what we do here. When was the last time we blocked a punt? Um, 
I, I could I could I could tell you one person who blocked a punt and that person blocked a punt against that team up north and returned it for a touchdown. Remember remember that? Which doesn't count as a punt return for the record. No, it doesn't. Um, um, who, um Ransom. Ransom yeah. did in 22 against Maryland. I think Seven Banks blocked one. I think that's true. That's a name I haven't thought about in a while. I like Seven Banks. I like Seven Banks more than most people like Seven Banks. I think a lot of the animosity towards Seven Banks had more to do with the defense than it did Banks himself. I, I will I will defend Seven Banks. I will I will die on that hill. Um I feel like JTT recovered a blocked punt at some point. That does sound familiar. I I my brain is not firing to remember though. Um after the penalty in the playoff against Clemson, Day doesn't send the block team. I mean, you know, it's he does everything he, in retrospect. He he does. It's just very scare he very scarcely he that he caused that. It's it's hard in college just because the likelihood of sending the block team to someone hitting the punter is so high. Yes. Um, with this being an older team, especially on the defensive side. Maybe you trust your guys a little bit more to not hit the punter. Might see, and not, not only that, but you're playing a little less in the field possession game. If your defense is very dominant, might allow you to take more risks on things like punt returns. Um, so you might see more, or on punt blocks rather. So you might see more punt blocks this year. Mm -hmm. And when your offense is potent, I see the reasoning for not to go for a block. Yeah, I agree. Blocking a punt is an Iowa move that like that's the shortest form way of saying that, that that I can. Punt block is nah. it's not it's not even trestle ball. Trestle that he's afraid of field position metrics to be doing stuff like that, although he he is also the person who said. He, he had a stat that he loved about if you block a punt, you win 90 some percent of the games. Trestle loved yeah, those yeah. weird stats. Yeah, yeah. Trestle loved punting. That man should <laughs> have or should. He's still alive. He should someday write a book just about punting. Yeah, I think I think that's the last time here. It was. It was in 22. With um, with the ransom blocking the punt against Maryland. I think it was the last one. I don't, I don't see any from last year. And if there was, you can correct me, but I'm not seeing any. Okay. But when your offense is potent, you should also def not attempt the worst fake punts in history instead of letting CJ Stroud run the offense. Def still not better. The punt, <laughs> my understanding, the punter chose to run, which might have, he, that that was, the punter did that. Um, which might be why he's at Vanderbilt now. <laughs> may or may not. I don't know. Is that where he ended up Vanderbilt? Am I remembering that correctly? I don't remember. All right, Kyle, it's time to end the episode. To uh, answer your question, Jared. Your, oh, to answer question your question at the very, very start of the episode. <laughs> oh, I have no idea. No memory of what you're talking about. What did I ask? Related to quarterbacks, like for all the national champions. Oh, yeah, yeah. I went back to 2000 and okay, I count that's a long nine. Time. I count nine. Nine quarterbacks who were like the difference maker, like were elite quarterbacks. Yeah. Well, and, and, and it feels less low. than nine. L that feels less low. than nine. So I'm going to go backwards, like Joe Burrow, difference maker. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Trevor Lawrence, he was a difference yeah, 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 yeah. in that game. Jalen Hurts, question mark, maybe? No. No, no, I wasn't sure. Okay. All right. You can move, move him. Uh, Deshaun Watson was. They, they benched him in that game, Kyle. Yes, you're right. 
you're right. Yes. We, uh, I understand Watson's that Jalen Hurts has gone on to be pretty decent in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. But they benched him uh, in that game. Yeah. Deshaun Watson. Yes. yes. Three. Jameis Winston. Yes. Yeah. Um, going back to 2010, Cam Newton. Yes. Yes. Uh, 2008, Tim Tebow. Yes. Yes. Vince Young. Yes. Uh, Matt Leinart. I'm actually going to yes. take off. You no, know what to say? Yes. yes. That's a yes. You, you sure? He won, the, he won sure? the Heisman. He won the Heisman. Did he, he not? He, he did. He did. But was he the difference maker in that national championship game? Because, I mean, Reggie Bush was a stud. Yeah, but they're, he, they're one and two, though. I, I'm saying, like, who is a game manager quarterback versus a okay. difference making right. quarterback? So that's seven. He won the Heisman. That's seven, then. I'm curious about who you left seven off slash eight. at this point. Seven, seven slash eight of the last 24 national champions. I see, but I'm curious who you left off the list now. Um, Stenton Bennett? No. No. Mac Jones? No. No. Do you know who Josh uh, Hupel was? I, I do, and no. <laughs> uh, no Dorsey, no Krenzel, no, no, no. Matt and Malk. No, Chris Leak. No. Uh, Matt Flynn. Although no, Chris Greg. Leak was fine. Like, please go ahead. Greg uh, McElroy. AJ no. McCarron. No. Cardale Jones, as much as we love Cardale Jones, he wasn't a difference maker in that game. Shh. Dude, Jared. Jared. Yeah. I. I, I can't show you the picture, but this, 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 this guy, this, this guy over here who wears number 15 was, was the difference maker. The question isn't the difference maker. I, I, I left Cardale Jones off. Uh, Jake, uh, Jake Coker. No, Mac Jones. No, no. Stetson Bennett. I left you're, off. You're, yeah. Yeah. No Stetson. And JJ McCarthy. I left off too. Yeah. No. Okay. Now we're, we're good. Um, okay. Zeke was the man versus Oregon. Hundred percent. The question isn't mm-hmm. who was the MVP. That 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 I don't think that should I don't think that's I don't think you had to win national championship game MVP to meet the criteria. Unless, um, you, unless you want to talk about your quarterback trucking a nose tackle. I think we <laughs> could talk about the quarterback <laughs> trucking a nose tackle. Yes. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm I'm sorry. And I, and I praise JT Barrett a lot this episode. I don't think we win the national championship with JT Barrett. And if that doesn't make Cardell Jones a difference maker, literally the maker of the difference. Versus Bama, Cardell Jones was the difference. It's it, the point is having a difference making quarterback, not having a quarterback who single handedly won the national title. That's all I'm saying. All right. All right. We're going to move on. So oh, it's time to end the episode. Uh, Kyle, what's in Kyle's corner? He wasn't great versus um, Oregon. I understand. But he's pretty much dominated the two games right before that. Like he was playing Heisman level college football. The three, the two or three games. Well, he wasn't that great against Michigan, but it, the, the two games before that. He had he had two great games, but Zeke had three. I the, the question is not <laughs> Zeke is um, the MVP gonna, through that run. Zeke is the MVP but, through that run. That is not the argument being made here. His skill set altered the game that qualifies him as difference making to me. That that that's lawyer logic right there. You can't. Listen, my lawyer is spoken. Like okay, Squire is spoken. Squire, I need to give you a dollar someday just so I can actually like call you my lawyer. I don't I don't need any legal services. I just want to be able to like say that you are my lawyer. Um All right, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um we're way over in time. We was gonna talk about the Olympics, but a lot, a lot of great, a lot of great, great things happening at, at the Olympics. I'm 
I, I, I could I could talk for another hour here, but I, I, I will save save you the hour here. <laughs> OK, man, we didn't even talk about Michigan and the leaked NOA draft. Another episode. We'll talk Notice. when the actual notice of allegations come out. We'll talk about it. Yes. Yes. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. I'm counting my discord activity as pro bono services. Yes. But what I need you to understand Esquire is that on TV, I see them do that thing where the lawyer says, give me a dollar. And then the person gives them the dollar and he goes, okay, now I'm your lawyer. And because I've seen it on TV, that's how it works. Actually, I know you're a lawyer, but I've watched a lot of Law and Order. So that's all I'm saying. All right. Uh, any? Uh, am I ending the episode now, Kyle? Yeah, end the episode. End the episode, Jared. <laughs> Tonight's ending music brought to you by a Columbus-based band uh, called Playing to Vapors. We haven't played Playing to Vapors in a minute. We'll play them here tonight. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Playing to Vapors.